Welcome to another tutorial video here. We're going to be taking a look at something a little different today. Today we're going to be looking at creating textiles. Now these are tiling textures that I use when I make characters to put on clothing and uh, any kind of uh, repetitious patterns, things like leather and straps and, and things like that. Um, I've recently gotten into taking pictures of these myself. Uh, what you're looking at here is a series of photos that I've taken. I've got a uh, Pixel 7 um, cell phone, and it has a an incredible feature that can zoom in up to eight times taking these macro photos. So uh, I'm able to take these really high res photos um, of kind of some some close up regions of areas. Now this is always going to work best if you can eliminate lighting. Um, you'll see in a couple of these here, there's kind of a strong light source. Um, if the fabric is more matte, uh, less shiny, you uh, encounter this a little bit more easily than if the, uh, the fabric is shiny. Um, and so I've been going through this uh, with a couple of different, uh, a couple of different uh, ways here to try and get the, the best results. Uh, typically, I'll, I'll do this inside of Substance Designer, and I'll go and make a tiling fabric that I use on things. Um, but I recently started playing around with uh, Substance um, sampler and using that to go and generate some of these things. So to begin with, all you need is a photo um, as as flat as you can get it. Um, you don't want to have any wrinkles. So a photo like this is no good where you can see that the fabric is rolled around. You want to get it as flat as you can um, and preferably even lined up with the camera. You can see that um, with this image here, I'm I'm pretty straight, vertical and horizontal. Um, though if you do have things that are that are on an angle like this, uh, you can still correct that. You can still bring it in. Lighting is also important, um, even if you don't have uh, any kind of lighting and shadowing. If your fabric is matte, um, you look at these here and you'll see that the the entire top row uh, of these these things here, these are all um, fairly well lit. I had a lot of lights on in the room while I was taking these photos. And then the ones down at the bottom, these are these are not very well lit. And some of these are actually the same fabrics as the ones that we're seeing above. Uh, they were just taken in a less uh, taken in a less than ideal lighting situation. Now, if you are unable to capture photos like this with your phone, uh, it's not the end of the world. You can always go online and find something like this. Now, this is uh, not the best image in the world to use. I don't know if you can see this or not, um, but there is a watermark on this one and using sampler and using all of these uh, these image processors they are very very sensitive to slight and you even though we can't really see it too well um when it comes to looking at the image here uh, with the naked eye the software will pick that up so you need to make sure that um you are not uh using something with a watermark um like this one but if you were to find a a fabric online if we were to go and do an image search here um for fabric close up and we go take a look at what we can find uh you'll see that there are and there's there's the one that we were just looking at uh and you'll find that there are, there are a whole bunch of these that we can use um that are really really good this is another really nice kind of woven fiber type deal it does also help if these things aren't black uh color wise you're always better off using something that's lighter in color so that we can adjust the color in the material in the shader um, but using a, a black one, there's still means that we have that we can uh, remove the coloring. Even if you have things that have multiple colors like this one, the red and the black, uh, we can still use that. We can actually swap out those two colors for anything that we want. So I've already gone ahead and taken a photo here of what I want to create. I'm looking at creating a jersey fabric. This is meant to go in some of the more breathable areas um, of my character's clothing. I've gone and brought this into Photoshop here, and I'm going to do a, a, a few preliminary things in Photoshop to make uh, our work inside of Sampler a little bit easier. Now, you, you don't actually have to do this. You can edit this stuff directly in Sampler and, and uh, kind of straighten things out as it were there. Um, but I do I just do find it a little bit easier here working inside of Photoshop to clean this up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a square uh, version of this. It, right now, you can see that it's not square. It's wider than it is tall. So I want to create a square version of this. 
and I want to make it as tiling as I can get it. Now, the photo of the fabric that I took, the, the fabric that I was interested in is, is, is only really just the, the lighter stuff that you're seeing here. There is a secondary fabric that's underneath this, and I'm actually not interested in that fabric at all. So I'm going to concentrate what I'm doing in the upper right here, where some of that color is a little bit darker. And I'm going to try and process this in Photoshop a little bit to see if I can't get rid of that and, and just leave this white mesh kind of material here. Now, again, I don't actually want my material to be white. I actually, black is the color that I'm aiming for. Uh, and I do plan on putting something else in behind it in those holes. Um, but here, I you know, I want to get rid of these shadows. Shadowing is, is really bad when you're doing this kind of thing. Uh, the processors can remove lighting, but uh, it, it is kind of limited in what it can do. So to begin with, uh, in order to try and make this uh, thing tile, uh, we can use some rulers here. And if I, I'm just going to put one right down the middle here to show you this. I'm, I won't snap it to the middle, but I'm going to go kind of right down the middle of this oval here. And there is a row of these ovals here. And if you look at the first one, you know, I'm kind of going right down the middle of this oval. But when I follow that line, eventually it ends up kind of over off to the side here. So an indication that this fabric is kind of tilted in that direction. And in fact, if we look at this horizontally here, it's even worse. If I go right down the middle of this one, you can see that that line actually goes way down here. So it's, it's kind of really angled in that direction. So this is what we need to correct here to try and make this work a little bit better. And Photoshop's got some pretty nice tools to do this. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a couple of guides in, one kind of at the extreme left of what it is that I'm trying to copy. Uh, and then one I'll put uh, kind of at the, the right extreme here too. So I'm looking at this oval and then I'm counting one, two, and then there's the fourth one over. Um, and so that's, that's where I'm going to try and make those things line up. And then I'm going to do the same thing uh, horizontally here. I'll put this right through the middle of that oval there. And I'll bring another one down here. We'll try and find a square-ish shape. And there it is there. So if you, if you actually look at in between my guides, there's kind of where that square is. So here is my first oval. There's one right in the corner. And I need to place this one up in this corner. So that's where it's kind of missing um, the shape a little bit. And then this one has to come up as well. And then this one needs to be shifted over. So that's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to unlock this layer. I'm going to hit Control T to go and transform this. And instead of actually uh, just scaling and moving, I'm going to right click and I'm going to go into Distort. And that's going to allow me to actually change this in a slightly different way that is going to allow me to move uh, these shapes kind of where I want them to go. So I'm going to move this one up and kind of over. And I'll bring this one kind of back down and over again. I'm trying to keep this centered in that hole, and I'm going to need to move this one so that it's in that hole. So it's kind of adjusting one, adjusting the other. So there you can see I'm kind of going right through the middle of that line now, which is nice. That that looks good. If I go and look at the ones going uh, uh, vertically here, we can see that we're off here a little bit too. So this is kind of going to go up here. That's going to bring this one back down. So you notice that I'm shifting kind of one, then the other, then the other. I'm kind of going back and forth here, trying to get these to line up as best I can. There's the fourth that I got to get into that middle region. This one's kind of missed and off a little bit. That one can come back. That's in the middle. This one's got to come up a little bit here too. So there we go. Those are kind of lined up now. You can see there's one here, one here, one here and one here. They're not perfect. They're not completely lined up, but they're pretty close. Also, if I go down the center of the line here, we go through these circles as we go down. So they're kind of all doing the right thing. So I'm just going to hit enter. That's going to accept my transforms. And then I'm going to use the crop tool. And we're just going to crop this image to inside of that square that I made. Now, this is not a perfect square. I was using the image here as a means of uh, being able to define kind of where that square is. I'm going to go in and, and change this. If we go image and image size, we can go take a look at actually uh, the actual dimensions of this. I'm going to switch this over from percent to pixels. 
And here we can see that we're 869 by 784. So it's still rectangular. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to shrink it down a little bit. I'm going to turn off the link and I'm just going to put this number in here. So 784 and I'll hit OK. And now this thing is a perfect square. Now it doesn't make a tiling yet. It isn't perfect, uh, but it's it's getting there. And the next thing we're going to do is I'm going to go to image, image size, and I'm going to turn my link back on. But now I'm going to clean these numbers up a little bit. Uh, I'm just going to make this even 700 pixels. That's going to make it a little bit easier to play with the uh, the math here in a moment. Okay, now to try and make this tile a little bit better. I'm going to go to Filter, Other, and I'm going to go into Offset. Now, because I made the image 700 pixels by 700 pixels, I'm going to put a halfway mark in here. So half of 700 is 350, which is the number I'm going to put in here. And that's going to shift the image over 350 pixels, tiling it. So now the seam that used to be on the edge is actually right down the middle now. So there's where our our object is that doesn't it doesn't quite line up. It's it's actually pretty close with what we just did, um, but not not exactly perfect yet. There's a few fibers here that kind of go in the wrong place. And, and again, the image processing is gonna be really hyper aware of this. So we wanna try and uh, do a little bit of a better job cleaning this up. To do that, I'm gonna go into the rubber stamp tool and I'm gonna create a new layer. Now I'm creating a new layer because I don't wanna work destructively here. I don't wanna destroy the pixels while I'm working. I wanna remain, uh, I want this to remain intact in case I need to go back and change something. So I'm gonna create a new layer on which I'm gonna be painting but I'm gonna be copying from the lower layer. So I'm gonna select that first. I'm gonna make sure my brush is kind of nice and big here so that I don't have to do too many strokes. And more importantly, I'm gonna keep the hardness at zero. This means that my brush is gonna be kind of blurry around the outside. So let's go find one of the circles that's intact in the same place as one of the ones where the, where the hole is. I'm gonna hold Alt, and I get this little crosshair, and I'm just gonna pick right at the very front of that node. Actually, let's do it at the very top center. I'm gonna go pick it right here. With that selected, you can see that I'm now carrying that image around here. I'm not holding uh, any of the buttons down on the mouse. The, I, the uh, rubber stamp has just copied that region, and now it's going to allow me to go and paint at an offset. That offset also includes moving layers. Now I'm going to paint on layer one, and all I'm going to do is just line this up with this image, and then I'm going to click, and I'll just kind of drag my whole way up and down that vertical seam. In doing this, that's kind of unpainted or, or removed, and you can see if I hide this layer and bring it back, it's gone and made that completely tiled. Now we can do the same thing. I'm going to go back to the original layer, I'm gonna find one of the ones that's broken here and we'll go and fix it by grabbing a side of this one, lining it up with that one, and then again, just going and painting straight across that seam line like that. So there, we've got something now that's tiling quite a bit better than it did originally. In fact, it tiles perfectly. I'm going to go and just merge this down now that I'm happy with the way that it looks. And now we've got this set up. Now I want to get rid of, again, that kind of underlying color that's under there, that, that bluish tinge that's underneath. And so we'll, we'll try a few things here to see what I can do. I'm going to go into my levels, that's Control L, and I'm going to bring the darks up here to see if we can't just pitch those back a little bit, um, just to the point that they kind of disappear. Now I do want to watch out how much of the uh, the main area here I'm losing, but that's not too bad like that. I've, I've still got my fabric weave here. You can see there's a few places where I'm not quite getting what I want out of this. So I'm going to try and just eyedropper this. I'm not sure if that's completely black. It is. I want to make sure that I'm using the same color here. And I'm just going to go spot paint some of those little areas here where I'm, I'm not quite all the way reaching the color that I want. 
Okay. We now have a tiling version of this and we can we can use this to now generate our material. So I'm gonna go and save this. I'm gonna go save as, I'll just throw it on my desktop here um, so that we can reference it rather quickly. Um, and we'll call it Jersey, which is the name of this kind of fabric and weave. And I'll leave it on the desktop like that. That was saved as a PNG. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna hop into Sampler. Now, I haven't done anything yet here in Sampler. I just have it open. And the idea is that I want to go and bring that image that was just created uh, in here into this project. Now, I'm going to set up a few things here to make this work a little bit uh, better in our favor. Uh, the first of which is that we've got a cube here and our uh, our material is not going to look fantastic on uh, a cube. You know, it's a uh, it's a fabric that we're making. so. Uh, it would be a lot better if we did this on something that actually looks like fabric. Um, so I'm going to go to my viewer settings down here, and I'm going to switch this over to the cloth preset. This is just a simulated uh, piece of fabric on top of a sphere. This is going to make it a little bit easier to see what we're doing and, and make sure that this looks the way that we want it to look. With that done, the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to open a browser, and here is my, my image that I just saved. And I'm just going to go and drag that into this layers area here. I'm going to let it go. When I let go, it's going to ask me what I would like to do with this upon import. And you can see that there's multi-angle to material and texture import and uses a bitmap. We're going to use this one here. This is image to material. And it's actually AI processed, which is going to make this work a little bit easier in our favor. So I'm going to hit import. That's the one that we want. I'm going to hit import. And we're going to end up with three layers in our layers here. The first is a material that it generated. The second is our image that was imported. And our third is the AI powered image to material, which is trying to go and generate fabric out of this or generate a material out of this. So that's kind of cool. If we go and look at our textures here on the other side, you can see that it made a base color image. It made a normal map. It made a roughness map. It made a metallic map, realizing none of this was metallic. It made a height map. It made an ambient occlusion map. And there's no opacity. And then there's my original image. Now, you notice my original image, we, we were able to get these things to go right down to black. But when we look at them here on the, uh, on the material, they're not actually going down to black. That's because the image to material processor as a de-lighting, it's trying to remove lighting from the system. And it believes that black is actually part of the fabric. And so it thinks it's in shadow. So I'm going to go and pull that down a little bit. The other thing that I want to make sure of here is that my little holes that I've got, these little ovals here, are pushed in. If they weren't, we could go into the, uh, the image processor here, and we could actually invert our height map. So that would actually make them go the other way. But in this case, they actually are going the right way. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave them at like that. Now, this is also a really big piece of fabric that we're looking at here. It's not exactly what I'm after. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in and change the tiling on this. I'm going into my viewer settings here and here's my tiling, it's set to two. I'm gonna increase this to, let's say 25. That's really, really dense but that's a little bit closer to how it's going to be used in game. Now, this is also, uh, when you look at it, 2K. This is, these are really large textures. I don't need it to be anywhere near that big. I'm gonna drop this down to 256. Now, it'll take a moment for it to process, but it will end up bringing us back to where we were. And that looks pretty decent as is. It's kind of doing exactly what I want it to do. It is still really gold, which is not what I'm after. So we can go start adding a few more image processors here to start making this look and feel a little bit more the way that we wanted to. So one of the reasons I'm tiling it as much as I am is to try and identify if I can see tiling marks on it. I, I zoom out enough, I can see it, but at about this range, it does look pretty uniform, which means I don't really have to worry about too much. If you were getting a lot of uh, tiling issues here, we could go into this layer. We're going to go to the add a layer. And one of the things that we could do is equalize this. So I'm going to go and type in equal. There's equalize right there. 
And I can add this in. And what Equalize is going to do once it's finished is it's going to try and tone match every pixel in here. So instead of having really bright ones and really dark ones, it's kind of just going to even the whole thing out. Now, if I bring this way down, you can see that it, it does it to the holes as well. In this case, actually generating errors in the geometry. So we don't want that. And so I'm going to bring this up again. It's actually not too bad there. It's kind of looking the way that I want it to. The other thing that we can do is we can go and add a color in here. So C-O-L-O-R, we have color replace. This is going to allow us to choose a color from the image and replace it with whatever we want. So if I go and add that on, you'll see that it's replacing the black here with this red. And so we can go in and do that. We can play around with, you know, how much that is going to change on this. Um, how much of that black is being absorbed uh, and that kind of thing. Um, we can also do this with the roughness map or we can do it with the uh, ambient occlusion map. We can use different inputs for this. I'm going to go and delete this one because that's not the one I'm going to use. I'm going to go back into a search for color here and I'm going to use colorize. Now, Colorize is going to do is it's essentially going to grayscale this whole thing, which is what I want. I want this to be a grayscale version of this. In fact, I'm going to start pitching it up a little bit in brightness as well. This is going to uh, give me the ability here, go back into this image, to make it look almost white. And that's, that's actually what I'm after. I want this to look white. The reason for that is that now, when I bring this into the engine, when I bring this into Unreal, and I tile this and put it on my fabric, it's going to allow me to just multiply this image by um, essentially when I'm ever, whatever I'm after. I can, I can put a vector parameter here and, and choose whatever color I want. So that's set up pretty much the way I want it to, uh, to be set up here. I'm kind of pleased with the way that looks. It wouldn't be too bad, I think, if I had uh, a little bit of a darker range in that base color. Um, but if I go through and look at my channels here, everything is, is pretty much set up the way that I want it to be set up, um, which is nice. And now we just want to export these. We want to get these into a folder that we can bring into Unreal. To do that, I'm going to head over to the right and I'm going to go to the share button. We are going to export as, I'm not going to put these online here, um, rather into the other software. Uh, so here I am here uh, and I just now have to pick what presets I want to use for this. So the first thing I'm going to do is go and spit this out in the right folder. So I'm going to head over to my projects folder. I'm currently working on a Snowcross game, characters, textures, and here's my textiles folder. I'm going to make a whole bunch of these. I want my base color. I want my normal map. I want my roughness. And my metallic, there's no metal in this. The metallic map's just black. So it's kind of a waste of my time to render out a completely black image. So we'll get rid of that. I'm not using the height map. We're bringing this into Unreal and I'm not displacing anything. So I don't need that. I do want the ambient occlusion and there's no opacity in this image. So I can turn that off as well. I'll change my format from SBSAR, the substance files here, down to PNG. And then I'll leave the preset default here. And then I'm going to change my resolution. It's at 4K right now. And again, I just need this to be 256, the same resolution we're seeing here in the viewport. I'm going to tile the heck out of this inside of Unreal. So I don't need a very large file to waste a bunch of memory. So let's go hit export and let that spit out what it's supposed to do. And then we'll open a file browser. And we'll go take a look at what it did. So I'll go to my Snowcross folder, into my characters, into my textures, and into my textiles. And indeed, here are now my jersey fabric materials created for me. Okay. I need to make these a little bit more Unreal friendly. So I'm going to return to Photoshop. We can close this now that we know that it works. We'll bring that folder back open. And I'm going to bring in the ambient occlusion. Not the base color, but the roughness. And actually, if I wanted to be very optimized, these are just three black and white images, which means they can be packed together. So let's bring those into Unreal, or into Photoshop rather, and then we'll go and pack them. And I'm just going to pack them in an alphabetical order. 
That's going to help me remember when I get into the engine, which is which. Looking at three black and white images might lose a little bit of the plot here in figuring out which is which. Now, I want to make sure that these are 8-bit, which they are, and the one that starts with A, so I have ambient occlusion, A, base color, that's the B, and then roughness is an R. So that's the order I'm going to put them in. I'm going to make the very first one here. I don't want it to be a grayscale image. I'm going to go to image mode and RGB. This is going to allow me to have channels, red, green, and blue, which I need for these other images. Okay, I'll grab my base color, control A to grab all the pixels, control C to copy them. I'll head back to the ambient occlusion and I'm gonna select the red channel. Now I'm not gonna select the, or the green channel, sorry. I'm not gonna select the red channel because that's where the ambient occlusion lives and it's, it's already there. If I go to my red channel, that's what we're seeing. So I'm gonna to go to green and I'm gonna control shift paste to paste it in place. I'll go to my roughness, control A, control C, head back to my ambient occlusion, head to the blue channel and paste that in place. And if I go and look at my image now, we get these kind of little pretty colors, this peach, purple, and, and pink showing up. Again, just a result of what's happening with these other images when combined. Now, the only thing that I might go and change is I'm not getting a lot of information in my ambient occlusion here. So I'm gonna hit Control L. And in fact, you can see that most of the pixels are in the top, maybe fifth of this image. So I'm gonna bring up some of the black slider here to introduce more of those shadows back into the image like that. This again is going to tint the image even further and I now have what I need. So look, we're gonna go and save this. I'm gonna hit save as, and I'm gonna go and give this a proper name. This is my Jersey. I'm gonna type uh, that out. And after Jersey, I'm going to do an underscore and this particular image is our ambient occlusion, A, our base color, B, and our roughness, R. So I've got an ABR image. I'll save that out. And I wanna make sure my naming is consistent across those images. So I now have my Jersey ABR. I need the Jersey normal. So I'll rename this one to match. Uh, Jersey underscore N for normal. And that's it. Those are the two images that are required inside of Unreal. Let's go give this a look and, uh, and see what it looks like here. So I've already got one that I was playing with on here. This is a glove I've made for my character. And you can see I've got a really, really dense uh, nylon fabric here on this thing, uh, which looks pretty decent. Uh, I'm not going to be using this on the entirety of the glove. I'm just kind of testing it out at the moment. Let's go and add another one here. So I'm going to go and import. And I'm going to bring in the images that we just created. So that was in characters, textures, and textiles. And there they are there, the ABR and the normal map. So I'm going to bring those in. Now, recognize the normal map, and it changed the compression the way it should have. But it didn't recognize this ABR image. And so... I just need to go in here and turn off the sRGB to make sure that it's going to be processed the right way. Now all we have to do is set up a material uh, that'll use this the way that we want it to. I've already got a material set up like this, but we'll build a new one here so you can see the process. I'm gonna create a new material. I'll call it master material underscore and jersey. We'll go into that material and we'll start bringing some of our textures in. Now I'm gonna have a series of textures that I wanna use with this. It's going, to, uh, it's going to live on a jacket, so I wanna be able to put this on the jacket. So let's bring in the ABR, and let's bring the normal in as well. So there they are there. And my textures are gonna be set up in two different modes here. So we're gonna have our textiles, and then we're gonna have our mesh maps. Now we don't actually have any of the mesh maps in here or the jacket as well. So let's bring that in too. I'm gonna to go to imports, I'm gonna to go to OBJs, and I'm gonna to go to final geo. And there's my jacket low poly. So I'm just gonna make sure that this is what I want in terms of the import here. Um, I wanna make sure that this is being brought in as a, uh, 
not interchange pipeline. What is this? I want to import the jacket low and static mesh. Uh, this should be a static mesh. We're going to make sure that we don't recompute the normals or the tangents. Uh, we don't want to compute weighted normals. We don't care about that. Vertex color, I don't care about. I don't have any of that on there. Uh, import static meshes. And then let's, I don't need to build nanite. This is not a nanite mesh. That should be okay. We'll hit import here. Okay, so it did, it brought in some materials here, which we don't care about. I'm just going to go and delete that material. And we're going to put, I'll just put the jersey fabric on this as a whole. Um, I do have some, uh, some masks in here too that I can bring in that'll help us choose where we want it to go. If I go into textures, uh, I've got a mask here. Let's rename this so that it makes sense. There's my jacket mask. Um, so yeah, we'll bring that in as well. And again, I'm going to go and configure this to be masks like so. All right. So now the only other thing that we need, uh, to go with the jacket is it's, uh, it's textures. Um, so if I go and hit import here, um, inside of the textures, I've got a jacket normal map that I want. Uh, I don't have a proper color map for this yet. I have one that I'm playing around with that we can at least do a test on to see if it's going to work. So I'll bring those in, and now we can go and add those to our jersey material. So here is the jacket color, the jacket normal, and I'll bring those in. Okay, so again, we have our mesh maps over here, and we have our textile maps over here. So the first thing we need to do with the textile maps is we need to make them tiles. So I'm going to add a texture coordinate. And we're going to multiply the answer of our texture coordinate by a, I'll make a scalar parameter here, which we'll call tiles. This is going to give us the ability to change how many iterations of this fabric we're going to see. Now, when I plug this in, it's going to break these. And that's because our tiles has a default value of zero. And if you multiply anything by zero, you're going to end up with zero. So I'm going to multiply it by one like this to make sure that we don't end up with uh, nothing showing up. Okay, next we have our color map and we have our normal map. Now the normal map looks garbled here. Indeed, it looks very garbled here. So let's try and re-import this. I'm not sure what's happened to that normal map. Uh, let's go and re-import and see if that fixes anything. That seems to have fixed it, so I'm not sure what happened there, but it looks like it was a little garbled. Okay, so in terms of color, uh, we need our mask in here as well uh, in order to be able to choose where this goes. So I've already kind of defined where this is going to go. It's going to be using the blue channel from the mask, and so that's the only place that I'm going to put this. I would end up with other textiles. here. This is just going to be my blue textile. I have a red and a green textile in here as well, but we don't have those currently present. So let's plug our base color in and our normal map in. So right out of the gate, this is going to make the jacket look the way that it's supposed to look. So if I go in here, we'll make an instance of this material so it's a little bit easier to edit. Um, I'll just leave the name as is, even though I will change it down the road. And we're going to bring this jacket in here like this um, so that we can see what's going on. Let's go and reset it to the origin. I'm going to go this one to the origin as well, and we'll go zoom in on that area. Okay, so now we've got our jacket here somewhere, which I don't see, which is odd. I'm not sure why that's the case. We're going to go and delete it, and I'll try and bring it back in again. Indeed. Oh, there it is. It's really large. So it looks like there was an export issue um, with bringing this thing into the engine. So no big deal. I'm just going to lock this for now. I'm going to have to find the proper export settings to get this right. Looks like it was imported really large. There we go. Okay. So there's the uh, the jacket now. 
in the right place at the right scale. Um, and we'll go and place that material on it. So I'm going to grab the instance and I'm just going to assign it in the material slot here. That way, at least we'll be able to see it on the uh, on the the jacket. So we can see the uh, the paint job here, the colored job that's on this. And uh, we need to go and add that jersey fabric, which is going to live kind of in this little checkerboard area here. So that's what I want to go and manipulate. Okay, so let's go and edit this material here to make this work. So the way that I'm going to do this, I have a normal map. I'm going to bring this out and we are going to blend angle corrected normals. This is going to allow us to mix two normal maps together. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to blend that normal map with the mesh normal map from the jacket like this. So now what I've got is I've got the two of them um, plugged into the, the same normal map. And if I go and plug this into my normals, we're going to end up with that now showing up everywhere. Now, the problem with this is that it's very, very large. You can see there's one of the ovals. So let's go give this a better default tiling. I'm going to tile it. Let's start with 30 times. Okay, so that's a little bit better. I won't be able to tell if it's the right scale till I actually see it on the jacket, uh, but it's, it's starting to get there. So we've got our normals blended correctly. Now I don't want to put this everywhere in the jacket. I want to use our blue mask here to choose where this goes. So this is a combination of the two normals. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a linear interpolation and I'm going to blend the combination with the original jacket normal using that blue mask like this. So now this lerp will not just combine the normals, but it'll combine them where I want them combined. If I plug this into my normal now. Now it's only going to put that where I want it to be. Now, if I look at this, it looks like it's not done its job here correctly. I'm going to put this on a plane. And we'll go and rotate around it here so we can see it a little bit better. And again, I know that I want it where these little, these little guys here. Are, and I can see that it's actually doing the opposite. So not a, not a big deal. We can go and alter this here. I'm just going to go and move this there. I'll adjust this here again. And I'll plug this one in here. And now, it looks like it's doing the exact same thing. How is that possible? Let's go and switch these again. Now, something is bizarre here um, because it doesn't seem to matter which channel I put them in. Uh, oh, uh, that's because I'm I'm mixing the wrong wrong thing. It's over here. This is where I want to switch them. Doesn't matter where you put them in the blend angle. So there, now it's putting that fabric in the right area. So now it's right there. Again, I'm not convinced that the scale is correct just yet, um, but I'm okay with that. I would want to kind of just get the, uh, the everything else correct. So those are being blended correctly now. Let's do our base color. So if you remember, the base color is the green channel in here. Here's our ambient occlusion. We can just go and plug that directly into the ambient occlusion. Again, I'm going to want to use a lerp here so that I only put that ambient occlusion where it belongs. So if we hold L and click, we'll get another lerp. I'm going to put one in A. So again, we want to track which, which goes where in here. So the jacket by itself is A, and the jacket with the fabric is in B. So we're going to do that with each of these things. That's the same alpha, and the alpha or the... Um, the ambient occlusion goes into the jacket by itself. And then we're going to combine that um, with one here uh, in order to uh, remove it from everywhere else. So if we go look at what this is doing, if I start a preview here, it should only give us, and you can see I've mixed up the order again. So we'll put this in here. So there, it's only putting the ambient occlusion where I want it to go. 
this one is handling the rest of it. So we'll stop previewing. Okay. So we've got the ambient inclusion. Uh, our base color is going to be the same thing here. So I'm going to create a linear interpolation. And we're going to create a multiply. And we're going to multiply the base color against the base color. And this is our combined base colors. The base color by itself is B. The combined is A. And our blue mask controls the alpha. I'll put this in the base color. And now it should be multiplying our base color here so that we get that in conjunction with the pattern. Now, if I look at this, it looks like it is indeed doing it in the wrong place again, which means I did go and mix the order up on the LERP. So we'll switch that for this. And there, that gets it off the belly of the jacket and into the right place here. So that's much better. So we've got um, we've got most of this kind of lined up here. The only other one that I've got to connect is the roughness. And so I'm going to create another linear interpolation. I don't know what the roughness value I'm going to have for the uh, the rest of the jacket is going to be, but I'll put this one in here. We'll set the roughness. Let's set the entire jacket to 0.85 for now, just so that we can see it. And again, the blue channel is my mask, and I'll go and put this into my rough. I don't need to plug anything else in here. And that you can see is going to give me a unique roughness on that panel. Now again, I'm not convinced that my scale is correct here. I'm gonna go and save this. And we should see this actually on the jacket now. We can actually see that fabric showing up where it's supposed to be. It's the wrong scale, so we wanna fix that. This is why we're using a material instance. So if I open my material instance here now, I'm going to undock this and I'll turn on this little tiles that we generated. There's the default value that I put in 30. I'm going to double that and put it at 60. And you can see this becomes quite a bit more dense. In fact, I don't think it's quite dense enough. I'm going to move it up a little bit more to 75. And now we're getting quite a bit more density out of this, making it look a little bit more like that fabric. Now, as I mentioned, I think it would look a lot better if the, the inner sides of those holes in there were completely black. Um, but that's something that we can kind of go and tweak along the way just by adjusting the, uh, the base color image here. I'm going to rotate it into the sun. I've got the sun kind of improperly set here, but you can see that that's now giving us a pretty decent um, fabric weave on this particular panel. And so that's kind of the idea. I'm going to make several of these fabrics um, for all the different regions on the jacket. You know, these ones are meant to be in the breathable areas, um, as well as regions of high movement, like in her elbows here. I'm not convinced that the uh, the reflectivity in this is set correctly either. I might want to go and play with that. But that's all going to be done inside of Photoshop. So once I go into that uh, image and adjust it, I can always go back to um, a Sampler, and I can go and adjust the uh, the roughness here and play with it. There's my roughness right there so i can go and adjust that as well um, but because i've got it in photoshop i can just use my levels in photoshop to adjust it and that's that's about it that's the entire process of generating one of these textiles um and going and placing it on this on this uh, particular piece of clothing um and so yeah i hope that's been helpful i've got a whole bunch more of these that i need to make myself to get this jacket ready to match uh, everything else that i'm making um, and so, yeah, we'll see you in the next one. I hope this has been helpful and uh, take care.